Hello, my name's Simon and I'm a member of Dartmoor Search and Rescue Team Plymouth. I volunteer with 50 other people on a rescue team based in Plymouth. Uh, we cover the southwest part of Dartmoor and also uh, surrounding areas such as Plymouth itself, South East Cornwall and quite a bit into South Hams as well. On Dartmoor itself there are four search and rescue teams. This includes Tavistock, North Dartmoor and also Ashburton. The four teams cover the moor and also further afield and we are set up to look for people, search people, help people that are on the moors or for surrounding areas and also to evacuate people that may be in trouble who need taking to an ambulance. We also work with the police, coast guard, ambulance and fire services, help them with any uh, rescues or searches that need happening. When we're asked to search or recover a person that's injured, we call it a call out. And these normally involve stretcher carries, remote first aid in a place where it's hard for ambulance service to get to. If helicopters can't get up due to bad weather, we're sent in as well. And we provide me medical assistance with quite a few medical health care professionals on the team. So normally I would stand in front of people and talk about the team in a presentation style. This time I thought I'd actually ask the team members to talk about what it's like to be in the rescue team themselves. So I hope you uh, enjoy the next section. And so now I'll hand over to them to talk about it some more. I have been in the team approximately five years. I've been in the team for quite a long time. I joined, I came down to Plymouth in the end of 97 and I joined about a year later, so almost 21 years uh, as a member of the team. Um, about two and a half years I've been in the team. Now oh, I love it, yeah, yeah, it's flown by, absolutely flown by. Done the induction weekend back in November 2016. It was a year's worth of training and we eventually badged out in November 2017. So since November 2017 as a full full badge member. As a day job I work for the ambulance service and it's something that I've joined since doing the team and it was actually through the team that I decided to change and do that job. My day job is um, I'm a freelance first aid trainer. So I'm registered with several companies and I work for myself. Uh, providing first aid training, all different types of first aid course, which is great fun. I thoroughly enjoy teaching that particular subject. And, um, I've also become an NHS uh, volunteer, so I've uh, just actually just come back from shopping for a lady down the road. I've been doing the shopping for um, a few weeks now, and I get calls every now and again, uh, mainly to do pick up prescriptions or do shopping for people. So I'm on call for that as well, as opposed to call up and call for the uh, rescue. Team. Complete opposite, I'm a buyer for a machining company. So I spend all day buying tool made parts, electronic parts, um, and I have to ensure they come onto site in time to build things basically. So it's, a, it's an office job. So I'm sat at a desk nine to five. Uh, day job, current title is operations director for a security company. During the summertime, we do a lot of events and festivals. The most memorable to most people would be the MTV crashes up on the hoe, uh, Tall Bay Air Show, events along those sort of lines. Um, I think for me, the most memorable call out was a couple of years ago where we uh, found a lady who'd taken an overdose on the moors. For me, it was my first find, which brings with itself its own challenges and emotions. And I was really pleased to be part of the dog search and it was our dog search's first find as well. So for me, it was a special call out because I really learned to appreciate 
the role that she has in, in finding people? Um, over the years, we've had lots and lots of call-outs. Um, they're all different for different reasons. Sometimes call-outs can be completely unsuccessful. We don't find anybody. Sometimes uh, another team, search team, might find somebody. Um, personally, I've actually never found a casualty on in my search team, but I've been on a call out where a, a casualty or a person, missing person has been found, which is obviously good news. I would think one of the first few call outs I did, um, it was in weather like we've got at the moment, really sunny, hot day, we were out searching all day long and we we're looking for somebody. The reason it was uh, memorable was the fact that um, it was one of the first ones I did and that the, the local people were very, very kind and um, supportive whenever we were asking people, have you seen this person? Uh, a lot of people knew them. And that's quite common in some of our call outs. The, the local people we might bump into, dog walkers, people who knock on doors to say that we're searching for somebody, do you know them, have you seen anything suspicious? Please let us know if you see anything. Um, they're all very supportive. They understand what it is we're doing, which is obviously very important. Uh, not only for ourselves to find somebody, but for the family who, even in sad situations where the person is either not found or not found alive, then it's closure for that family, which is just as important. Everyone must remember their first call out, and it was um, it was a fallen climber who was injured, and we were working with the Tavistock team and South East Ambulance to bring him back from the Jewistone. And it was a good positive outcome. I think we had a thank you from him. But just how everybody worked together, and it was a it was a it was a nice day, and it was everyone. I don't know. It was a really good call out. It's always stuck with me, and that's when I thought, yes, I really enjoy doing what I'm doing. I think the press were there, and they interviewed me and Kate at the end as well, which is nice. It was a bit, um, yeah, a bit different. Most memorable. A few stick to mind, but probably the one for me wasn't actually a Plymouth call out, believe it or not. It was uh, Ashburton call out. Ken phoned me up and needed a dog nav. And they had vulnerable missing person, so he gave me a ring because he needed a nav to go up there. So yeah, we went up there. The reason it was memorable is because it was my first find. And so that, that's why it sticks in my mind so much. Well, it wasn't my find really, it was Sasha's find. But once she, you know, announced her presence and she found the guy, then obviously I went in over done a bit of the Kaz Karen. So yeah, it was a really good find considering the circumstances under which we were tasked to look for him, shall we say. Joined the team because I, I love walking, I like being outdoors. And when I moved back to Plymouth, I found I wanted to do something which helped people, got involved in the community. Right, why did I join the team? That's a good question. It's something that, you know, you, you see lots of people waiting for that. Um, I've always been a walker, loved walking on the moors, the fells, anywhere. I was in the army for a long time. And of course, after that training was out on the moors, I just loved doing it, even from a kid. I was uh, happy climbing and walking. And you appreciate it. You know, there are dangers out there, and it's great fun. And also, uh, it's good to be out there, but knowing that somebody can come along and help you if you uh, need any help. So uh, when I left the army 21 years ago, the, there was a chap who uh, worked with the Tavistock team, uh, working in the same company as me, and said, well, you, you love to do it. I said, okay. So we went along and we did a sort of a training induction night, and he said, I don't know why you want to come join us, because you, know, you live in Villa, we're in Tavistock. So I then went to join the Villa team. So it was a matter of, I sent a, I wrote a letter then to the, uh, the then chairman, and they invited me to come along and rest as they say is history. So it was just a matter of putting something back, knowing we all love the outdoors, we love going outside, we know there's an inherent danger sometimes, and of course being able to put something back and actually do some uh, good, uh, no matter when or where, uh, it's, it gives you that sort of a good feeling that uh, you can actually uh, go out and uh, help somebody. Um, why did I join? I was um, looking for something to do in my spare time and, and I wanted to do something that I thought I felt made a difference um, and I wanted to do something in a team environment. I've always been into working with other people and um, I do, I'm do. i quite sociable so um, I worked with a guy whose wife was with the Tavistock branch and he would come in each week and say what she'd been learning because she'd just started what she'd been learning, what she was doing, and I thought I could really see myself doing this. So I emailed um, Darren and Plymouth Branch, and it went off from there, really. Yeah, I've really enjoyed the team ethos, getting to know people, um, getting out on the hill, 
Um, and obviously I had basic map reading and compass skills and basic first aid skills, but I've really been able to enhance that. I absolutely loved it. I have no regrets at all. Why did I join the team? This is really going to sound cheesy and quite cliche, and I expect most people have said the same answer. It's really just to pass something back to the community. You know, I spend probably like, like yourselves and 90% of the team spend a lot of time out on Dartmoor anyway, whether it's just walking for social or, you know, out with friends. So it was just a case of putting two, to, two and two together with like-minded guys and girls that spend so much time out there, see what I can give back in. And it was something separate to work as well, to be honest with you. It was in a, I use it as a real good escapism from work, so it channels my ideas elsewhere with, like I say, like-minded girls and guys as well. So being a member of the rescue team, we get to use some uh, really high quality technical kit. This enables us to rescue people quickly and safely. It spans from ropes uh, to water related equipment and also the hill equipment. We get clothing which is quite good for um, surviving in extreme weathers and also we have our personal kit which we buy ourselves. All of the equipment we buy and all of the maintenance and running of the team it wouldn't be possible without donations from the general public. We also get donations from businesses as well. Uh, we're currently involved with the co-op community fund which is quite useful so if you're not a member already sign up for a membership card and, and uh, nominate that will search and rescue team Plymouth. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to know more please uh, contact us on Facebook or you can email funding at dsrtplymouth.org.uk Thanks for listening, take care, stay safe, bye.